interrupt a fight to counter initiate. So that's something uh, that might be difficult for NP. But with the side of NP, a lot of team fight, a lot of control, a lot of AOE damage as well. So curious about your thoughts here, Sunzi. Who's going to take uh, game number one? Newbie, Avenged, position one is God tier. I love it. Ten seconds okay. remaining. Uh, Andy, what do you think? Mm, I, I feel newbie are playing a bit fast compared to what NP want to do. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go with newbie as well. All right. Okay, I'll be the contrarian. I'll believe in NP. Let's see if this MSS Enigma can live up to the hype. Yeah. Only time will tell. We've got uh, Mott and Draskal here to take this series. Game number one coming your way. The grand finals of Zotac Cup Masters starts now. All right, guys. Thanks so much, Zayori, and of course, Suns fan. We are into it now. Moving into our first game of these grand finals. Uh, been a pretty long tournament, all things considered. Uh, most of these teams, of course, uh, this happened last time. It's fine. It's no big deal. Some connection failure happening, but um, I'm excited to see how these teams do. Of course, we talked about probably should have been the grand finals between uh, these two teams, the Manila Masters. Uh, we, we kind of, I guess, guessed that these two teams would be the top two. Not that it was much of a difficult guess, but here we are. Uh, you know, a couple days later at the Zotac Cup Masters LAN in Taipei. And it will be, in fact, NP versus Newbie to start things off. So we're going to jump into the game. And boom. Awesome. Prepare You're ready to go, battle. my friend. All right, let's see how this landing phase uh, sets up. And um, again, I don't know. You know, I think the vent we talked about the, the greediness of the, of the core, uh, what was it? The um, core specter for Newbie. Do you think that Venge is, is not nearly as greedy as, as that Spectre could oh, have been? Oh, God, no. No, 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 no. The Venge is much more, we're going to push the tempo of the game. Spectre is, we protect our hero, and then we just rely on, later on in the game, Spectre pretty much being unkillable, unless she gets black holed, which is why I thought that it might be okay. But newbie don't want to take the game late, you know? They just want to apply pressure. And by having the Venge, you have even more minus armor. You can kill Roshan, like, instantly. As soon as KP hits level six, you walk in there with a corrosive haze and one wave of terror. That thing's just dead. Yep. It's going to be extremely hard for NP to get there quickly if you know newbie even go for a sneak. Speaking of, they're going to go for a smoke here. Yeah. Uh, pretty good level one kill potential here on newbie. Yeah, they have the rolling bolt already. Mugi, of course, will probably go for the match missile. Faith, they're going to head around the other direction though. Uh, Dire Ward does not see them smoke, I believe, and they'll try finding somebody in the enemy jungle. Uh, going back to this Venge, though, as you mentioned, Venge, of course. Uh, not going to be the, the the premium right clicker for this squad. It's going to be, of course, the Shadow Fiend that will do the job and kind of Moogie that sort of accelerates that right click and accentuates that damage as much as possible, getting a, an early Hurricane Pike potentially. Obviously, the Wave of Terror and Vengeator will help do that job. Um, we've seen Midas's previously on the Vengeful Spirit. We'll see if that's going to be the case again for Moogie. And here we go. Aggressive try line already up at this top lane, and Envy might get caught as Moogie looking for this magic missile. And he's going to go for it. There it is. He started off the rolling boulder will follow up as well. And Envy now going to get caught the Thunderstrike to follow through. They have the Flame Guard now down. They cannot get the kill, taking a lot of damage. Envy trying to turn back around, but can't do anything with it. And now AUI also needs to be careful. So at the very least, Envy is salving up, and he will stay alive. Another Thunderstrike. Now another Magic Missile. They will have Rolling Boulder available, and Envy's going to get caught yet again underneath this tower. They'll get first blood. It's the Thunderstrike and a couple of auto attacks from Faith. So Envy not really in the safest position, even after avoiding the first part of the gank and salving up, still will end up falling there. Yeah, it's just... This is why I'm not really a huge fan of the Ember safe lane. Like, I understand the reasons why you want the hero on your team, but a lot of the time it always feels like his laning phase is just so bad mm -hmm. in anywhere other than mid. The, and the only reason it's good mid is because of how many levels he gets in middle lane, too. It's like Highlight I was going for some Blackhawk down shit here. So yeah, he, he was going in deep. I mean, they really wanted to put some pressure here on SCCC. Uh, but they don't. I don't know if they necessarily need to, not yet anyways. Because Fata is doing extraordinarily well in terms of his, his lane. Obviously, he would like to shut down the Shadow Fiend whenever, but um, Fata is having an extraordinarily strong mid lane right now at the start of this game. 9 and 3 to 3 and 1. Looks like Lina versus Shadow Fiend to me. Yep. It is an extremely hard matchup for Shadow Fiend in the first couple of waves. Yep. If you have a good first wave, though, you, you're just good to go. And once you get level 3, you obviously get the two rays. And that'll help you secure some more CS. Plus, you can kill jungle stacks pretty reliably. So, when I say SF is stable, I mean, sure, you can have lane counters, but he's going to get items. Right. And uh, the inevitability is, is kind of functioning of the hero. But meanwhile, wave of tear coming in from Moogie. Envy rotating over. 
not really getting too much out of the lane. Uh, they, they got that one kill, and Envy now just goes back to work in terms of farming. Of course, we already talked about Fata, and then down bottom, it is going to be Enigma uh, for MSS, getting some denies off with the Eidolons, and then, of course, getting some last hits with them as well. So, kind of interesting to see how these lanes go. They roll rotate again. Kaka mid looking for a rolling boulder. Be huge to find Fata if they could, but we'll see if that's going to be the case. He's waiting for two, I think. Oh, no, he's going to go really fast. Okay. Right now. Uh, he does have the Orb of Venom slow, but Fata should be fine. Ray's coming out. There's going to be the Fairy Fire. It's not nice. enough. Wow. The snipes from SCC. I thought that was going to be enough for Fata to get out, but that last hit just in range for SCC. Excellent work there. Yeah, I thought if if he if one more melee creep, creep died, he would have got two, and then he would have had Boulder Smash. I'm surprised he didn't wait, but hey, he knows his limits better than I do, apparently. Mm -hmm. Gets the kill. He's making his way back towards top two. Probably die. Rolling Boulder. Along with the Boulder Smash, the Thunder Strike will secure yet another kill for Noob. So they're really starting to put the pressure on all across this map. And uh, Kaka, again, he's showing what his Earth Spirit can do, getting involved in a couple of hero kills, both mid and top, to start things off. It's that fast tempo that we were kind of talking about during the draft. They just want to make things happen all over the map, because A, there's a Crystal Maiden, not notorious for being super strong by herself, kind of just enables other heroes in the laning phase to like spam spells and stuff. Mm. But if you're just getting contested heavily like this, there's not really much you can do about it, even with the Clockwork, who's only level 1. That's another thing, too, about Clock Support. Only really strong once you get to, like, 2 or 3 when you can get that Battery Assault. They could find Kaka, though. Yeah, I mean, again, he only has Cogs, and Kaka could just roll him. All right, never mind. Around. See you later. Bye. Man. Yep. The roaming Support Clockwork, not speedy enough, and when he's not in the right position, especially when he's in level 2, as you mentioned, is just... Not much you could do, man, I guess. You need that frostbite first or something. The one thing that kind of worries me about how this is going so far is, sure, it's, it's only a couple of kills. And in the grand scheme of things, it probably like won't have a huge influence on how the game goes. But this isn't a bristleback safe lane. He can't go back and kill stacks. So if Envy starts suffering too much in the lanes, his recovery is going to be you know, having to go to the jungle. But Lena kind of wants to do that, too. So are they wanting Envy to be the one who's like creating space on this core? Or are they just going like full in, we're gonna just farm and hopefully, you know, MSS gets some some black holes off. Because it, it feels a little bit all over the place to me right now yeah. for NP. I mean, can uh, Newbie abuse the, the jungling aspect of NP and start pressuring towers early on into the game here? I mean, they do have a Shadow Fiend, excellent tower pushing himself when he gets some farm. So is that something they can go for? Yeah, definitely. I mean, Shadow Fiend is the siege engine. But I'm talking about more along the lines of what NP can do. Like, they, they are doing okay mid. You know, S Triple C has recovered pretty well. He's back up to 27, only an 8 CS lead now for Fata. Mm -hmm. And that's just the, the nature of the matchup. Eventually, the Shadow Fiend is going to get farm. And then you have to have done something elsewhere on the map. Otherwise, you know, your lane counter doesn't really accomplish what you want it to, which is try to keep the Shadow Fiend from getting out of control. Yeah. We'll see. Maybe they rotate Fata out and he tries to find a kill at some point in time. But for now, he's going to sit mid. Uh, they do rotate to uh, AUI 2000 down bottom. MSS will make some more Eidolons. Kaka's in the tree line in the meantime. Also in this bottom lane. KP clarating up. Cox to get the push back into faith, but he throws up the Thunder Strike at the same time. Uh, MV is up to 23 last hits, so about tied with Mugi. All things considered, the, the biggest problem for MP is they lost a couple of heroes. And again, that Shadow Fiend continues to get farmed. And uh, we'll start putting pressure elsewhere. Um... Oh, only Boulder mid. Fata, Boulder smashed up. But they have the range drop, and that means that they can't go for this kill. LSA is going to connect. Nicely done. Pilot Eye, Battery Assault. Can he get there in time? There's going to be the kill. Double raise is not enough for S Triple C. He will be able to back himself away. Pilot Eye will make it out. So nice little rotation, but here comes the Gloom stack. Pilot Eye, maybe in some trouble from S Triple C, or S Triple C, excuse me, but he will not be able to get the kill. Um, even with that raise coming in, Pilot Eye actually healed back up a fair bit. So that'll be that. So nice gang for Pilot Eye. Uh, getting Kaka, but it's again just the first kill for MP in this game. Actually, the second after the game. They got the bottom game. as well, yeah. They, yeah. they committed the black hole. MSS dropped it on the KP Slardar, so big kills. Very, very big. Delaying the Slardar's blink. Also alleviating a little bit of pressure off the top lane. You can see the supports of Nubi have now rotated across the map. They're no longer just pressuring NB 24-7. He's halfway to six, so... If he wants to, he can start carrying TP, go around with remnants, try to force some fights, perhaps. Looks like Mugi AKU9 is just very aggressive. Doesn't doesn't not scared of the 
the Ember Spirit only at level 5. Yeah. Gave him the auto attacks. Vengeful Spirit. Old 2 Wave of Terror, level 3 Magic Missile, went for Phase Boots as well. The more, the new common build, I could say, for the uh, the core of Vengeful Spirit. That extra movement speed is pretty good. Let's look at the attack speed uh, talent later on into the game, uh, if you choose to. It's actually level 10, so we'll see if that's going to be the case. The other choice is the Magic Resistance. I, mean, I know you talked about that recently, Andy, and I would imagine... It's also... Gonna be attack speed. It's 8%. Yeah, like, it's not great. It's so bad. That has got to be one of the worst level 10 talents. I think anyone looks at 8 magic resist, and you could even not have a talent on the other side, and you would just take it out of spite, <laughs> you know? So I will take the not 8 magic resist, thank you. Okay, oh. That makes sense. If that's, uh, and I imagine he will go for the attack speed, but for now, looking at bottom, there's a smoke of deceit gank. They've already used black hole, as you mentioned. Looking for a Malphys. Here comes the Dragon Slave. Now trying to find an LSA. The sprint is there. Good boulder smash. That might keep him alive, and Fata looking for the LSA will find it. No. Laguna Blade comes out. He gets blown away. It's a Slither Crush along with SCCC coming in, and Moogie as well. Magic Missile used AUI 2000 in trouble. No mana left for Moogie. Still trying to find this kill. AUI 2000 has pretty much resigned himself to this death as he gives away the double kill to Moogie. So great rotations from Newbie. They will lose Kaka, but that is it. Um, and again, two big heroes going down for NP. Fata, of course, being the biggest. They just had a lane ward, so they, they saw the rotation uh, before anyone was in position to go for a kill. So everyone was just there. I think the only person who didn't TP was uh, Faith. Envy going for the remnant play after the glimpse, but unfortunately does it a little bit too quick. So he's going to just be sent back to base anyway. Rough. But yeah, just um, good reaction there from Newbie and having the information beforehand. You can see their vision. It's it's pretty much, you know, they have a top, they have a bottom, they have a room ward. So everything is uh, looking okay for them right now. Yeah. You're not wrong. They've got some vision. They've got some heroes sitting behind SCCC mid. Pilot eyes nearby as well. Kaka's going to walk up. Uh, but now the wave is pushing into the tower. Meantime, Dire Scam will go. NP are going to go aggressively they here. They're trying to fight this remnant coming through. Looking for the steering chains. Won't find it. Instead, they will get Kaka. They wanted to bring down the Shadowfield, but not able to do so as he pop the, pops the Illusion rune, which is a pretty good rune against that type of gank. So he's able to make it out, but they do at least get one kill. Um, and bring down Kaka. They were pinging it out beforehand, so they definitely understood. Just like you mentioned, trading the Earth Spirit for a three-man smoke gank. That was also, I believe, both of NP's cores? I guess you could count MSS as a core as well at this point. Who, by the way, purchased drums. You yeah. do not see that very often. I, I can't remember who did this, but if somebody picked it up at the Kiev Major, I believe, and I enjoyed the hell out of it. It's just, it allows you to push these towers down so quickly kind of uh, make up what you're lacking in some of these heroes. MSS will pop the drum charge. Might be in trouble. Swap back. Boulder smash to come through as well. The rolling boulder needs some help from AUI. Just enough to come through. Silence is there. Coming in from Geomagnetic Grip. And he should fall. One more auto attack and the wave of terror will do the job. AUI is able to make it out. But again, the swap sets it up. And they only need two other heroes there to get the kill onto that Enigma in the offlane. Again, just that lane ward is doing a tremendous amount of work. The newbie just know exactly what they're getting into. Because they have the information going into it, so maybe eventually it'll get dewarded, maybe it doesn't. But for now, it's just giving them a huge advantage. And KP just bullying Envy a little bit here. Man. This is suffering. Being Ember against mass minus armor, not a fun time. Because Ember does not have good base armor. No, he certainly doesn't. Five right now, and then minus eight coming out. They will have the Gloom Spack. Pilot Eye now in trouble. Raise one, raise two. SCC will get the kill. Nicely done. And going back to Envy, too, he is... I did not think he was suffering this bad in terms of his farm, but his net worth is not really that great. He's just ahead of the safe lane slaughter um, for KP, you know, and he didn't have the easiest lane either. So this is a bit of a tough time for Envy on the Ember Spirit, but again, he can come back in later on into the game if he can get to that, get to that recovery farm. If he doesn't just die here, it's possible that he does. They're smoked up behind KP. Ooh. Okay, Envy is not going to take the bait. They have static storm too. That would be a huge opening for them. But yeah, Envy's backing up for now. He's just going to pull. However, they're still running in. The sprint will come through. KP now spotted up. Envy throws phases on him. If they decide to dive, he would be under the tower. So they won't go for it. Instead, they'll just kind of clear out the stack and the, the creep wave as well and sit behind KP continuously for the time being. I mean, Envy's not farming anything during this time. He does have a retreat remnant out, but he's... I don't know if they can dive this. This is actually quite difficult. 
Yeah. One bad dive and, and you turn it around, perhaps even with a black hole, and things can go sour very quickly for a newbie, and they're not going to make that play. Um, level 6s are starting to come out, though. Everybody has level 6 now in the game. You have Pilot Eye with the hook shot ready to go. We've all obviously in the black hole uh, a couple minutes ago. Uh, the CM has her level 6, in fact, went for the freezing field at level 6 as well. So just some some big abilities coming out for both sides. Comes back. Pilot Eye is going to get caught again. There's going to be the kinetic field. He does have the range drop, but the magic missile will come through along with the boulder smash. Cogs will come out, but I don't think he's going to survive this. The crystal number will come through, but again, too little, too late for AUI 2000. As Pilot Eye gets dropped again by a positioning error, and Glimpse just magnifies it so much. I'm really enjoying the way the newbie are playing this out, because they know KP, he can't die to the Ember Spirit. This Ember Spirit didn't have a good start, so not really the craziest burst potential. Okay, MSS gonna get swapped. Static Storm, Magic Missile, he's out of it. The Kinetic Field, Boulder Smash, they might get this kill anyways. He's gonna stick up, and he will not survive. Tried turning, he may be looking for a Malefice or a Black Hole. Can't find it. Remnant coming through, SEC. Good usage of that Requiem. Now the huge raise is coming in. Envy man fighting him as well. The Kinetic Field, Envy's gonna drop, and now they've got to get out on MP's side. Newbie have not lost anything yet. Raises coming through from SEC just for good measure on some of these creeps. And it's again two kills and two giant kills at that as SECC continues to get even more farm on this Shadow Fiend. That was super unfortunate. Envy, I think he was trying to remnant after the Requiem so that his Flame Guard didn't immediately just dissipate. But that's kind of exactly what happened. So by the time he got in, he was just stuck in a right click fight with a level 13 Shadow Fiend with no Flame Guard. And that's just, you know, you're not going to win that. So. They're just playing so well around their vision. If you look at the way that NP played the early game, they defend their tier 1 to the death. They know that from the last couple of games NP have been playing, they really enjoy picking a hero that has push potential and is also kind of off the map a lot for MSS. And then they go for the safe lane tier 1 really early on in the game. Newbie just aren't giving it to them. They're sitting down there with their vision and they're saying, no, you're not going to get the tower. If you keep coming down here, we're just going to keep fighting you. And they're just winning these engages over and over again. So it's, it's getting a, a little bit... Troublesome for NP. Kaka gonna walk right into Envy here in the meantime. Mm -hmm. Should have a remnant away if need be. He's actually putting a lot of pressure on Kaka. Remnant will come through. Good boulder smash onto two. Kinetic field. Geomagnetic grip comes in. Another remnant. Kaka trying to get away, but Envy walks in front. He'll at least get that kill. And Biolite dies. Gonna stay alive as well. Meanwhile, mid lane. Fata swapped out. Will get the tower, but now the match can be still along with the raise. They secure that kill. So Fata gives his life away for a tier one tower, but they should also take this bottom tier one tower on top of it. So MP will get two tier ones and a kill on Kaka in the meantime, and that's top lane. Looks like NP will eventually secure the safe lane tier one of Newbie though. Keep in mind though, this is a very stark contrast compared to what we saw yesterday, where they were consistently getting that tower at like eight or nine minutes. Mm -hmm. Even when they weren't playing Drow, they were getting that tower super, super early. They love rotating and pressuring the safe lane. So this time around, it's a lot later. MSS is still, you know, doing pretty okay on farm, all things considered. He's almost got his, uh, well, he has enough money for the medallion, and then he'll be able to get the Solar Crest after. I'm guessing this is just for some kind of Roche play, mm -hmm. because for the time being, I'm not really seeing another purpose for it. I don't think you're going to really be able to tank up enough to live in this game versus the Mass Minus armor, so I'm guessing it's just for that specific purpose. Otherwise, you know, Newbie just seemed to be rolling on uh, rolling on all cylinders here. It's It's looking a little bit rough. Yeah, I mean, SCCC is going to have a BKB within, I don't know, 200 gold or something like that. And then uh, you really have to commit the black hole if you want to kill him, essentially. Or a hookshot cog, something like that. But um, what do you think about MSS not going for the the um, Midas on this? Oh, this line? could be a big kill. He's gonna, so close to BKB. He needs to get this. He needs to get out. Searing chance to come through. The raise is coming in, but it's canceled. He will at least get the clockwork with the Death Requiem, but again... At least he does finish his BKB as he dies. There is that. But uh, again, Envy getting that huge kill, as you mentioned. Very big turnaround for MP there. That was actually kind of unfortunate because the Death Requiem just gives him his BKB anyway. Yeah. So yeah. instead of delaying the BKB, it just gave it to him. Uh, well, it's still a really, really good kill. Like getting a Shadow Fiend down and having Envy there for the death, kind of bringing him back a little bit into the game. He's going for the, the bots into Blade Nail build. We've been seeing this a lot on Embers. I think it's perfect for this type of game, where you know that you're going to have to be in the fight, and you can't really rely on your Flame Guard and Searing Chains to do all of the damage for you. So I think it's one of those games where it's almost the only build he can go. Fair enough. We'll see. I mean, they have a long way to go, I think, for NP. Despite the net worth advantage being about even, it feels like Anubi are the ones with all the momentum in this game, even though they lose that Shadow Fiend. And, uh, 
We shall see this blink probably coming out from KP as they smoke up. Perhaps not. They clear up the wave. One smoke will break. In the meantime, Fata will hightail it out of there. He glimpse back. He does have a Yule Scepter. Slytherin Crush to come through, and he's in some trouble. And there it is, the Static Storm. He'll Yule's himself in time. Do they still go for the scale? It looks like the answer to that question is yes. Shrine will come through. They're going to try to turn this, but LSA does miss. KP and crew are going to hightail it out of there, and they're coming in from the side with a Clockwork. He does have Hookshot, but again, this would be a bit aggressive. Now he's going to get jumped on. MSS may be looking for a Black Hole. Midnight Pulse is dropped down. Pilot Eye is still pretty tanky. Will Hookshot away the Magic Missile, and of course, the Magnetize dropping him down with one more auto attack to get the kill. A lot committed there, but Newbie, again, they get the 1-0 advantage in these team fights. That's just going to be Roshan here for Newbie. They have everyone, NP, realize that they, they don't want to try to contest without the vision of the flare, and they're just going to go try to push out the lanes. The crazy thing about this is even though, you know, Newbie are making all these great maneuvers, they defended their tower for a long time, the Enigma is just equalizing the net worth and experience advantage just by existing on the map. This is the strength of NP, right? Every single game, MSS just manages to get so much out of his lane for whatever reason. And yep. he keeps the experience and gold extremely close, even in games where it kind of looks like Newbie is just steamrolling. He's pretty good. He's pretty good at finding that farm, right? He's a couple of good players to learn from in Envy and AUI. But um, in the meantime, Envy and KP going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. So they're crush forced out down bottom. Looks like there's going to be some TPs in. Fata doing a lot of damage to the tower. Now trying to run. There's the swap back in. Yule Scepter comes through. They need the Frostbite to fall up. They have the LSA. But now Kaka rolling in. MSS again does have that black hole. But they might need to leave Fata and let him go down. Dragon Slip coming out. Crush now will find MSS. Frostbite coming through. The Static Storm. It looks like they're going to lose two. The Freezing Field not doing anything. So they will have faith with the pipe up. AUI 2000 trying to get away. So they're crush not in time. Magic Missile as well. He will stay alive. AUI somehow avoiding that third death for NP. In the meantime, AUI, excuse me, Envy is pushing top and he will take the tier one tower. But again, losing that big hero in the Enigma as well as the Lena. The strength of Newbie's lineup right there just being displayed. Having Glimpse, having the Slardar with the Corrosive Haze Vision, you cannot run away. It's, it's like Zeus used to say, you know, can't run from heaven. You can't run from Newbie's team. It, it's just not going to happen. I think the only hero who has even a small chance of escaping is Ember. And even he can be caught. So it's it's why I was saying the opening two heroes of Newbie just totally counter what NP like to do in their Dota game. All right. Vitality booster for Fata. And yeah, it seems like there's not a lot of momentum going NP's way. And finally, this tier one tower mid might actually fall. SCCC feels pretty confident to start pushing this tower down. Mugi as well. He's got the early pipe done. Does not go for that hurricane pike build, but Seems pretty good given the circumstances of what they're against. A lot of magical damage coming out from MP. So that is an excellent pipe choice for Mugi this game. Oh. Oh. Bloodstone for Fata again. He's on his way. MSS, Solar Crest, VKB. That'll be his next choice. Uh, Fata looks like he's dead. Laguna Blade comes out. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, you can't do that. You can't fight that guy. <laughs> Rough. There's like this no man's land of vision in the middle of the map. It's kind of weird. Like they have deep wards on the side of NP, but they don't really have anything covering the river. So Fata's kind of just chilling there. You know, it's nighttime. You have restricted vision anyway. And then a couple of heroes just casually walk up and you get blasted. But again, NP all over the place on the map. Always yes. looking for something. Always trying to get some golden experience somewhere. I mean, so NP's pushing in. He might die here for this. Oh, he's... Uh, is he actually going to walk Ooh. out? Glimpse back, remnants away, nope. but then back in as the glimpse completes, and I think he's dead. So good attempt there from Envy, but the glimpse was perfectly timed from Faith that time. That will secure the kill. I was just about to compliment them for finding so much farm in the map, but that death is now going to lead maybe into this tier 1 tower down bottom. They still have the Aegis for SEC. The Frostbite will come through. They need to find more hookshot coming in from Pilot Eye on the side. They're going to try to fight this. He gets off the BKB in time. LSA not going to be there, and Moogie turning on MSS. He will fall almost instantly. SEC about to go down to Pile I Die. They at least get the Aegis out of this, but that's it for now. Magic Missile, they've already lost in, of course, MV previously in the last fight, and now they'll lose Pile I Die along with MSS in this other engagement down bottom. Okay, Again, we're not just, done. The funny part was S Triple C is BKB'd with Aegis at such a low amount of health and how confident he was in being able to win that. He's looking for Aoi here. Oh, oh my. he's okay, so dead. dead. Two auto attacks and a slithering crush. The Laguna Blade will come out. SCCC in some trouble. Searing Chase coming through. The Remnant as well. They need this kill. They will find it, but can they get MV out alive? 
The answer to that question is no. LSA to fly up as well. And Mugi actually avoids the Ulcep. There's not timed correctly enough for Vata. Malphus coming out. KP taking a lot of damage. The Solar Crest doing some work as well. Two auto attacks should do the job. Is he actually going to live? KP getting into the tree line. The Eidolons. Is it enough? They need more. He's actually going to stick up and stay alive. Goes for the TP. He will make it out. They will find Kaka on the Earth Spirit on the other side of the fight. And they keep that Tier 1 tower alive. But again, they keep losing these heroes over and over and over again, Draskal. It's a bit rough that Envy just pretty much died twice in a row. But at the same time, you know, they kill the Shadow Fiend. They get the Aegis off of him, they take him down a second time. Like you mentioned, they were able to keep the tower standing. I think that in of itself is kind of a victory, given the position that NP are in. And they're just, you know, back to farming. Just like nothing ever happened. Just continually hit the creeps, try to get some kind of advantage just by being more efficient on the map. Alright, so... I mean, Newbie have had the advantage in team fights and in, I mean, in kills, it's straight up 21 to 8, and somehow it's only a 3,000 net worth advantage. I mean, what do you do? You just keep kind of putting the pressure on for Newbie and, and hope at some point this starts turning into a bigger lead? I mean, what do you do here? I think the main objective is just to always be sure that you're securing Roche, because that's what your lineup does the best. You're very good at catching out heroes, so you get like one quick pick, you get Roche. The next one's going to be Cheese, and then you can potentially look to take the last remaining tier 2 towers and then even try to hit the, the tier 3s a little bit because you have a shadow fiend you have a, a vengeful spirit too with the damage over and now a dragon lance on top of that so you have two relatively good sieging heroes i'd say shadow fiend is actually one of the better ones right but for now i think it's try to hold map control continue to get your picks it's been working really well for them and then just make sure you keep track of roshan well we shall see if that's going to be what they can do or if NP will start getting some extra farm here. I mean, look at Envy. I mean, he loves going for these plays across the map, just farming and being aggressive, and he feels like he needs to to find that farm. And it was successful for that time. He's able to get out, and maybe they can take this Tier 2 tower. If they can take this Tier 2 tower in the safe lane, that's huge. In fact, it's going to be in deny range. And uh, there is a glyph, but they're not using it, and it's just going to get taken down. MSS will get the tower. No defense used at all, and now Envy knows, okay, well, they're missing off the map. I don't know where they are. They will have a couple of wards towards these ancient stacks, but... All of a sudden, again, NP continue to find that farm seemingly out of nowhere. Although that time it came from the tier 2 tower down bottom. You can tell newbie are just... They want kills, but at the same time, they don't want to be pulled all over the map. They, they might be able to get Pylai die here. It's fuel stuff like Aka. LSA will come through. They've got the swap out. The static storm coming in as well. And it looks like Pylai die will have to get dropped. But can they find anything else? The frostbite will come through. Kristen over to fly up as well. The LSA coming out along with the Yules. The freezing field. They want Moogie. Can they find him? Good boulder smash to stop this. Another frostbite is available. Magic Missile. They're trying to turn this around. SCCC. Invisible. Throws up the right beam. Now going to turn it. Fight. Blows up AUI. Envy is low. So too is Fods after the right clicks from SCCC. He'll head up to the shrine. He might be able to survive this. He has Yules back at three. And the BKB down momentarily. Can they blow up the Shadow Feed? It looks like they don't even want to try to turn and fight. Turning around is going to be MSS. He's got Black Hole. Magic Missile comes out in time. KP finds the Slurring Crush. And again, MSS is denied that Black Hole ultimate from NP. And this time they get four. And they're sure to get a bit more map control here for Newbie. I can't bet. Like, SCCC did not give up the chase. He just ran at Fata until Fata was almost at the tier three. I mean, there was no way he was going to kill him, but I guess at the same time, if you're isolating the Lena like that, the rest of your heroes can just dive onto MSS. He's just never really been given an opportunity to get a black hole. It's it's too difficult. The, the Solar Crest and the drums, they definitely add to the push potential, and they make you marginally more tanky against this Minus Armor, but there's just so much of it. Like Presence of the Dark Lord, Wave of Terror, then you have the Corrosive Haze on top of that. I don't even know if anyone's bothering to make a Solar Crest, because they just have so much of it already probably don't even need it right it's just a very difficult game to be enigma the last pick venge is doing so much work for them because mss he even with the bkb he can't really afford to black hole anything but the venge unless moogie's already dead and that in of itself makes his job difficult <laughs> moogie probably uh, he's died no times in this game so there's a good chance he will be alive for any fight involving mss um but you're right, I mean, it's going to be tough for him to find that black hole on Moogie himself. But as you mentioned, the BKB is coming out, and that'll make things a bit easier. Not quite yet, though. Again, 5,000, almost 6,000 net worth advantage for Newbie now. They will head up towards top. They're looking for NV as he remnants back up towards the top lane. In fact, they continue to ping him, and they'll try to chase. They would like a glimpse from Faith. That would be perfect, but I don't think they'll find it. Blink in, but uh, does not have the vision, unfortunately, as NV is able right, to wall himself away. They just solo black hold. Kaka. Under spirit. 
<laughs> yeah, they just sold black Oh Oh my god. That's I rough. mean, it's it's a kill. Right. You know, if they can pressure the lane and they can force newbie back, I would honestly say that that's a moral victory. Because think about this, Roshan's up. If they force newbie to TP back, they're out of position for Roshan. Yeah. And then maybe they can kill Roshan. Oh, and one static be... storm. Oh, nice. Okay. Done. Nice. Gets that out that time. So weird how that worked, but. And I will say this, Draskul, it's not like they're going to use the black holes anyways. You might as well use it when you can. It's another thing. But That's true. But you can you can see NP's game plan. They want to make newbie TP back. If they TP back, then they can go for an outmaneuver and try to go for Roshan themselves. And then you already have two other heroes positioned around trying to cancel TPs just in case they're able to chip the tier 3 down far enough. But NP going to back now, recognizing that newbie are in fact moving back over to their side of the map. But they're not going to TP. It means that Roshan's still out of reach for NP at the moment. I mean, it's just going to be a fight for that, basically. If SCCC gets his hand on, hands on another Aegis, it's going to be very hard to win. You know, I don't know, man. I mean, he, this Butterfly is going to be huge, but he's, his BKB duration is starting to get a little bit lower. Um, and, and assuming they can kite him and have fought to use his abilities on him, it, it could be huge. But that's the issue, man. Uh, it, in spite of it all, it is still only 5,000 net worth advantage. It almost feels like, it'd be, I don't want to say they're ratting, but they're just controlling that bottom lane very well. And kind of forcing newbie back every so often. They've already done chip damage on the tier three tower. Flare does come through, but again, look at the minus armor. It's gonna fall so quickly. They cannot get here to contest. Envy's even gonna back himself away. They have to give up Roche. So much for that. No contention possible from NP. And the Slytherin Crush from KP will not find Envy as he able he's able to remnant towards this top lane. In the meantime, tier three tower getting assaulted. Envy looking to cancel some TPs. He actually does find Kaka, but everybody else is still getting out of there. Uh, KP first and foremost. And now they're going to turn on to Envy. He's going to try to remnant himself away. But there's the Static Storm. And boy, is he dead. My God. He got blown away. No no living through that one. That's a, that's a rip. Nice purchase here, too, on KP. Picking up the Shadow Blade. So this is a very nice item for those pesky teams that like to sit in side lanes all the time, like NP. A good point. It's not like they're going to have jam anytime soon, either. Yule Scepter, they're kind of baiting this. LSA to fly through, he does get off the Shadow Blade. They'll drop the Sentry, Malthus comes in, Laguna Blade, KP needs to run. A couple more auto attacks, should get the kill. Stick charge Ooh. is not enough. It's a last take from MSS will do the job. SCC this pops the BKP, and they're gonna kite this. Can they turn this around? MSS is just TPing home already. They don't want to go for this. No, he's canceled it. They're gonna try to fight this now, it looks like. With Envy down for 10 seconds, can they take this four versus four? Vata, they've got the kinetic field. Here's the BKB. LSA is going to miss, but can they bring Faith down? He didn't even have Static Storm, but it doesn't matter. He's going to get dropped. And now looking for more. Moogie's going to get spotted out. There's going to be the Yule Scepter. Envy TPing in as well. The LSA comes in, but he gets the force off. Instead, they've got the Searing Chains. They will use them. They want Moogie for the first time in this game, and they will find him. MP on the HUD as well. Envy continuing to Remnant forward, looking for more. And will SCCC be able to get back inside the base? It looks like yes, the answer to that question. But he goes in slight of the Searing Chains. Envy needs to be careful. The rest of his team not quite here yet. Again, it is still an Aegis. Along with that newly minted Mask of Madness for the Shadow Fiend and the BKB down for 20 seconds. Are they actually going to get a Tier 3 tower out of this? That is insane. NP still down 5,000 net worth, trying to take the first Tier 3 of the game. And they might be successful in doing so. Pilot Eye creating space. The Yule Scepter come through. They really want this tower. Black Hole. Oh, it's on to two. Kaka will fall first. They will get the Aegis. NP are turning it around. NP in trouble. KP will grab that kill. But Fata, the machine gun is coming. And he's doing some serious work. S Triple C throws at the Red Queen. It's time to leave. MSS Static Storm comes through and catches him. He will fall. LSA will at least hit it onto one. But S Triple C, his BKB now done. But he will continue to chase. The dust is up. He's got the Shadow Blade going. But I think Fata is too fast with the Fiery Soul Stacks. And AUI 2000 smartly heads into the tree line and TPs away. They get off a great black hole, which secures the Tier 3 tower. And again, we're still in this one at 31 minutes, Draskal. Ooh, man, that was super good from NP. They, they kite out the Shadow Fiend, recognizing that if they're, if they're trying to go on the Lina, and the Lina has BKB, right? You have three stacks of Fiery Soul. That hero just cannot be caught. Your haste speed, like all the time. So they commit super hard, maybe not even realizing that Fata had BKB at that point. Because I want to say the first part of that fight, it was a 10 second BKB. Then it came up because the fight lasted so long and then he BKB yeah. again. Yeah. But the chase into turnaround and that overcommitment from newbie, NP are so good at those drawn out fights. They make you think like you're winning the fight and then as soon as they recognize that they can turn, they just get a huge punish. Yeah. Getting the tier three in that type of situation after not even contesting Roshan, that was an incredible turn for NP.
It, they've still got a long road for NP to be sure, and it's not like Newbie are completely out of this game at all. Uh, still a very good, uh, solid start here for Newbie again. Uh, just maybe need to play a bit more crisply as we head into the 32 minute mark. A couple more big items are coming out as talked about Shadowfiend picking up Butterfly. A BKB is now done for MSS, and uh, the Blink will be next for him, but again, NP are splitting up the lanes. They have to move together as five for Newbie to take this tier one tower down bottom. And in the meantime, Envy is just splitting top and putting pressure on this tier two himself. You know, all things considered, newbies still have some pretty scary high ground potential. It's just that NP have been extremely good about being out on the map. Like, they're not afraid to take risks. I think that's probably one of the best attributes of this team, is they go out and they they like, okay, we might die here, it's fine. We lose Pile I die a few times, you know, we, we maybe lose Envy a few times, but as long as something else is happening on the map and you're forcing pressure, that's all that matters. You just have to pressure something to make the enemy team react to you. Otherwise, playing on the back foot against what newbie have, you just get picked off all the time anyway, and then you're not really getting an objective elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So even though it looks scary to play against, and I'm sure it is, it's just NP's game plan to out-efficiency the enemy. And yeah. it, it seems to, to at least for, for now, be doing okay. Yeah, I mean, and again, it just comes down to the players they have. Obviously, we, we know AUI's pedigree, we know MV and Fox's pedigree, but again, MSS really showing that he can keep up with the best of them in terms of getting that farm and finding that pressure. Envy will go ahead and TP. He was almost caught by KP. The smoke's still going, and it looks like NP are, in general, just leaving. They're just like, we're out of here. See you later. And uh, maybe with the exception of Pile I Die, he's trying to be aggressive and see if he can't He's in somebody. there. Yeah, he really is. Oh, oh God. God. Uh, nice. I believe he is dead. Okay, he's dead. I believe <laughs> he's, he's mega dead. dead, in fact. See you later. I mean, he's staying alive pretty long. I will say that much, but a kill is a kill, and S Triple C will get it yet again. Yeah, they have double Solar Crest. I kind of thought he might go for Force, but ends up going for the Solar Crest instead. Lotus would actually be amazing for NP on top of that. Being able to remove things like Amp and the Glimpse for Vision as well. It's really big to deny Vision from a hero like Disruptor because he wants to always be able to see to, to Glimpse and like put you out of, out of position and get kills. So we'll see if anyone's able to eventually get that. But the 10 second BKB on MSS too. So now if they do find that good black hole or they're able to kill Mugi, then there is an opportunity for some uh, some more Wombo here. I think here. he's dead, unfortunately. Yeah, he, he's looking a little bit. Oh, man. Rough stuff. Okay. Some rotations from Newbie have worked out. Um, there was a, a pretty good point where MP were really getting control of the map and, and having some vision, and that's not happening anymore, as there's a gem up on Kaka. <laughs> so, good luck. That is a really good point, because Newbie were doing a really good job in that early game about having vision, but NP had very deep wards from an early point, which has allowed them to kind of do this, play this hyper-aggressive, it kind of feels like we're just dying in side lanes, but then you look at the lanes and they're not crossing the river. <laughs> that just seems to be... NP style for the, the last couple of games that I've seen, but yeah, yeah you are right about the, the gem. Going to do a tremendous amount of work. Makes it a whole lot harder for NP to get this vision that they want. Um, but again, we talked about these big items, and they can't find that smoke with a, a black hole with a blank dagger. You know, I mean, they've got all the time in the world, at least for now. We'll, we'll wait and see. I mean, I'm curious to see how this goes. I, I would imagine Newbie, you know, that some of these items are up. For MSS, he, they just killed him. They probably could click on his items. Let's see if they get caught unaware. That's the big thing. I'm sure they know. It's just a matter of not getting drawn into these super long, chaotic fights that NP seem to thrive in. There are some teams who do not take long fights well. NP is not that team. They are really, really good at drawing out fights. I'd say that's how they like to play the game, to be honest. As Envy once said, if you don't know what's going on, how can the enemy know what's going on? Yeah, very true. And also, I mean, you talk about these long drawn out fights, and I think it gets more so towards the end of the game. Um, it kind of just comes down to what you're fighting with for NP. But for Newbie, again, more big items coming out. We talked about the butterfly for S Triple C. Kaka building into the Aghanim Scepter bottom lane. It looks like they'll find Envy. The static storm will come through. He gets dropped again. And I mean, this is kind of the, this is what we talked about. You don't have vision. This is the price you pay when you're you're pushing these waves out like this. Just getting killed every so often. That's quite a bit harder, yeah. I think once Fata gets Boots of Travel, it'll kind of alleviate itself a bit. Because right now, he's, he's lacking the mobility. He's sitting in the lanes with his Bloodstone. You know, he's pushing out as best he can. But without Travels, he can't really 
be on the opposite side of the map fast enough to get the lanes out maybe as far as he would like. Mm. So for now, he's just trying to play it safe because he already has one core dead. You can't really afford to have him and Fatha dead at the same time. That's when it becomes a little bit risky and you run the the odds of newbie walking into you again and then taking objectives and you know Roche ends up soon as well that's the thing too, also I was going to say you know if they were to to lose two there then that's definitely Roshan the good news for NP is that Roshan is not up front of the 59 seconds so kind of unfortunate for our, for newbie as they move into that uh, you know the 8 minute time, uh, spawn timer came out and it was like 2 minutes extra or something like that but so at least they won't lose Roche i mean I feel like Aegis and Cheese probably do a fair amount for Newbie in terms of pushing and taking fights, so I don't think... Can MP really contest, though, is the question. Contesting is going to be tough, but you do have things like hookshot. You know, you can go in, you can Midnight Pulse, you can hookshot, blink black hole. Sorry about the dogs. I don't... They're just awful. Nah, they're barely audible, honestly. All right, good. But either way, I, I do think that they have the chance to fight around Rosha, and it's just about how the fight goes. Oh, man. A Shadowfiend having a Satanic, though, and a Cheese? Mm. It's tough. Yeah, it's definitely not easy. I mean, and, and that, that Tier 3 tower bottom seems like a... Seems like a moment lost in time for NP, because they haven't gotten much since then. Again, that gen has really started to hurt them. Uh, but again, it's really... It's going to be Roshan that probably is going to signify the end of things here for Newbie if they want to try to push in and get the Sages and Cheese. See if MP can't find KP as the LSA comes through. They'll find the Frostbite. They have the Gouda Blade as well. There's the swap out. Meantime, they get the Magnetize off along with the Bur uh, the Boulder Smash as well. And MSS comes in with the Black Hole. He doesn't find Moogie, but Swap is already down. Can they kill as Triple C? He pops the cheese, and just like that, it's time to back if you're MP. Slide of the Syrian Chains will help on the Moogie. Now the Static Storm coming through, but it's only up onto AUI 2000. Now the Frostbite coming through, and NP, can they turn this? Cock is low, the hook shot away. Highlight, I will make it out. It looks like they will back. They've already keeping a couple home, including MSS. And now they're going to lose uh, at least a UI 2000. And so, again, they force out the cheese. They force out a BKB or two. But Black Hole is used, and NP don't get anything out of it that time. Well, I mean, it could have gone worse, I suppose. They only lose a Crystal Maiden. And they force the cheese out of S-Triple-C. That means the Roshan fight. Oh, man. If Newbie just walked to Roshan, it's going to be tough. It looks like they just want to push out mid a bit. They're going to lose their Shadow Fiend Shadow here, Blade. potentially. He's in trouble. They need the LSA to fly through, and they'll find it. The Laguna Blade coming out. The Satanic will not save him that time. Dead for 96 seconds. However, you still have a very good Roche line of Corrosive Haze along with Wave of Terror. Very strong stuff. Can NP get back home in time to contest this? It doesn't look like they're TPing in now, but it might be too little too late. Roche is already dead. A Flare will come through. Moogie will grab the Aegis. Kaka will grab the Cheese. However, Spata is chasing after them. He pops the BKB. The LSA comes out, but there's that Manta style dodge coming in. Forcing himself away. The Sheepers Guard coming out. The hook shots there along with the, the battery salt with the cogs. Slurry crush to counter initiate the static storm. They will get the Aegis, but now Envy is gonna get dropped almost certainly, and so too will Pylai die. They even buy back on S Triple C. MSS pops the BKB, then gets swapped back. A double kill for the Shadow Fiend as he taunts his way down this mid lane. Newbie looking to take game one here or at least force a few buybacks as they pressure this tier 3 tower. They'll probably get the buybacks. He, he didn't Manta it, by the way. He, he just missed. Oh, did he? <laughs> he just missed this stuff. Yeah. That's, uh... It was... I like that you take the high road route, though, you know? You, you give him the credit. You gotta... Like, you man, gotta he, when they're pro players, you gotta player. give them the benefit of the doubt, I think. Yeah, now, I think so. Guna? Oh, this is getting dangerous. Fata in trouble. Forced away. They've got the Shrine. Need to be careful. Slide if this series chain's coming out, but they will take the tier three tower. Can now can newbie escape with uh, without losing anything? And it looks like the answer to that question is yes. Absolutely. They're gone. See you later. Tower secured. Time to get some shrines if you're newbie. They've built a pretty significant advantage off of that whole exchange. At first I thought that they that NP would just immediately TP back to their shrine because they killed the Shadow Fiend. Like killing the Shadow Fiend in that situation when you know that Roshan is up, they did TP, but they didn't seem like they had enough, I guess, what's the word? Mm, I don't know, they, they just weren't fast enough of, of walking over there. Right. And if they had gone over there, maybe they forced, you know, S Triple C to buy back and they, they win that fight, who knows. But for now, they're going for a smoke play. The lanes are quite out for NP. Like they're almost to the base and in, uh, in mid and bottom, right. so. It doesn't feel like a fight that uh, NP just lost. I mean, look at where they are, especially mid. Mid is in. And uh, all of a sudden, newbie playing from the back foot, well, at least in terms of the lane position. Numbers-wise, they are pretty far and away ahead. 11,000 net worth. So, all right then. 
Ugh. MP holding on for dear life, it feels like. They lose one more team fight, and that, that could be it. Shadowfin continues to become a monster as he has yet another cheese on top of him. Satanic Butterfly working on now the Bloodthorn, as if he needed that. I suppose so. It's a good item. I think it's it's one that you almost always buy on uh, a late game Shadow Fiend. Just because it gives you so much utility, you get the mana regen, you have the sustain of the satanic as well on top of that. It it just kind of fixes a lot of the problems that he does have. Yeah. And if you're going to keep your hands on the Shadow Blade, and then you have a Bloodthorn on top of that, it also gives you solo kill potential inside lanes on heroes that don't have a, a dispel, which is also kind of terrifying for like support heroes, for example. But yeah. It's a, it's a really nice Shadow Fiend item, and NP are still just doing what they can to hold the map position. Over time, though, I think that Newbie are going to be feeling a bit confident here and might just go for a play. Yeah, they're, they're just going to smoke up right now. As you say it, and they smoke up, and uh, AUI2000 senses something is wrong. He immediately backs himself out of the lane. Uh, they do drop a, a Radiant Observer Ward in the meantime. Uh, Pilot Eye would be a nice little pick. Uh, of course, I think the biggest one would be one of the cores, but I don't think that's going to happen. Poor Pi, man. That's rough. He just gets shredded down. At the same time, like, you see stuff like that, but to be honest, I'm pretty sure he knows he's going to die there. That's, that's the difference, right? It's one thing to be on a part of the map where you die, and you're a core, and you don't have buyout. That's a bad death. But when you are anticipating an enemy movement, and the rest of your team is already back, Pi is just sitting there to tank the smoke. Like, that's the purpose of him dying, is so that a smoke doesn't kill a more important hero. Hmm. Speaking of that hero. Envy just saw them move through that freaking ward, and he's going to get ganked by it, as they have the Agadim Scepter Static Storm from Faith. He is dead for 97 seconds. He already used his buyback, I believe, and he also just bought the Octarine Core for good measure anyway, so... Uh, I don't know if that's game, but it sure doesn't feel very good here for NP, I would say, Envy. They're just kind of in this mode where they want to push lanes really hard. Fata gonna BKB. Oh, he doesn't have bots. He's committed to this. Oh my god. MSS gets blown away by Mugi. The swap out Kaka will fall, but now Fata in trouble. The bashes are there. The auto attack's going to work. Dead for 35 seconds on Alina because of the Bloodstone. 67 for MSS without buyback. In the meantime, pushing top is going to be the CM, but again, it looks like this, uh, this game one is starting to dwindle in favor of Newbie here. It's alright, the split pushing CM mod, here it comes. Oh, he's actually Does not. Does she have the damage talent? Oh, yes. AUI 2000 has the Cobalt format and the plus six <laughs> damage talent. There's no way, dude, S Triple C will just annihilate him. I know. I, I, I'm being optimistic, but. Uh, I like your optimism nice. mod. I'm a fan. I appreciate it, buddy. You gotta be. Dota games like this. All right, well, here we go. The push mid coming in from Moogie, and again, 28 seconds for pretty much both of these heroes. In the meantime, top lane, Shadow Fiend gonna get caught by an LSA. I don't know if they can get this kill. The Sheepin Guard will come through, will pop the BKB. Uh, Satanic was used as well, not to mention he also has cheese, so good luck killing him. And kind of just keeping Fata at bay. He's doing yeah, whatever he can. actually get him. Uh, LSA, Laguna coming out. There's the cheese, the freezing field to follow up as well. It's a lot of damage, but as Triple C going to work, and Fata just getting right clicked down. Another stun to come through. There's gonna be the Dragon Slave. A couple more auto attacks, and they'll get the kill. Meanwhile, mid lane, they'll find another pickup there. It's going to be Pilot Eye getting caught by Moogie. So, at least they stopped the pressure on the range Drax. I mean, it's something. Dude, that... I mean, they lose the melee, but at the same time, there's no buyback on the Shadow Fiend for 100 seconds. Everyone on the side of NP is going to be alive. They have Black Hole. Uh, that, uh, the Taskmaster that they used, or the Foreman, whatever the heck it's called, Foreman, the Kobold. Dude, the he just TP'd in, and he just... Blast at SCCC. They were not expecting that. It does sound like it would be a Taskmaster, or at least he looks like it. He's got the Pimp Cup and the Whip, too. Seems like a Taskmaster would be inappropriate. Yeah, he's name. got a Whip, right? Yeah. He's just living the life. But... When I think of Taskmaster, I think of Whip. You're right, buddy. But it is the Foreman. Double damage and, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, they don't have the, the SF for 66 seconds, but they still do a ton of damage. Ah. Uh, I mean, do you, what do you do here if you're MP? You can't really just sit back and farm, right? Or can you? That's the question. Well, they're they're making moves on the map. They're not just that them killing S Triple C in the first place is a huge. It opens up the map. Like look at the lanes again. Top's gonna be pushing, mid's pushing, bottom is pushing in favor of newbie. But they have heroes with bots. They've already taken the shrines, so they for what seems like the next couple of minutes at least they're gonna have a little bit of map control on their side. One melee rax is not really the end of Dota. And to be honest, they're down what 24 kills. 
and the 12k net worth lead doesn't really seem like a ton. It's only one or two fights. Yeah. The shorter BKBs get as well, you also have to remember that MP's lineup is going to become more and more scary because that means a Fato is going to have more influence in the fights, so we'll uh, envy. And then the blink black hole. We've only really seen like one or two of them this game that really got channeled for any duration whatsoever. Right. But it really only takes one or two of them at the end game to really kind of seal it. Just depends yeah. on if he can find the black hole. Yeah, I mean, it is. they have the potential to come back. MSS could certainly do this. And they also got rid of the cheese on the Shadow Fiend, so SCCC is a little bit easier to deal with. MKB-wise, I don't believe they have one to deal with this uh, butterfly at any point in the future, so that's something to consider. But again, they already have a lot, of, a lot of magical burst damage to begin with, so... Okay, I mean, maybe we'll wait for the next Roche, as it could respawn in the next three seconds. I imagine it'll be longer, though, so... We'll see. It Look is... at this. Look at Pilot Die, man. He's got a Tinker Ward. And he's just sitting over here waiting for someone to potentially come and gank MSS or go for, like, a side lane push. This is how... You know, this, this is, this is, how, this is how they died. get back into the game, though. This is how they did it the last time. This is yeah. how they kill SCCC. Yeah. They did the same thing. This is the, It's pretty much the exact same thing, except I don't think they had a Tinker Ward. I think they just had Fox running in there. And he looks like he's coming top. He might take the bait yet again. Uh, maybe not. He's sitting back now. He's like, okay, maybe I'll wait. I'll wait for my team this time. I don't want to get caught again. Let's not do it a second time in a row. Well, they don't really have any... They have vision bottom, but they don't have a whole lot of vision past that little hill on top. And that's that's the danger zone mod. That's what we like to call it. Mm, it surely is. All right. We're getting into the nitty gritty. 48 minutes. Uh, what are the big items that we haven't talked about yet? I think there's something that just came out. KP's Assault Kuros is the big one. Scan comes through, by the way. If they find this ward, it would be pretty amazing. But I don't think they're going to. Nah, they're already out of there. Well, they placed their own Tinker Ward on the side of Newbie. So if they're thinking about doing kind of stuff like that, then there's no reason to not look for a D ward if you have the chance. Is... I'm just not sure if they're interested in walking to that lane unless they're going to be going for Roche or something like that. Which is going to be up. Like, now, pretty much. Yep, one second. This game is getting silly, man, let me tell you. For what was a pretty close game early on, it's starting to hit that late stage of the game where it's getting a little silly. And by the way, this Roche will die again so quickly. Oh, it's just mega dead. So, one more time, how do you deal with that triple C when he has Aegis and Cheese? Good luck. He has at least Aegis this time. Cheese was picked up, I believe, for the uh, Vengeful Spirit, I would assume. It is. And more split pushing from MP, because that's how they're going to get back into this game. And now, probably wait five more minutes, too, because you can't kill SCCC twice. Oh, God, settle in, Andy. Well, this is kind of what you have to expect, though, because this is the style of Dota that MP like to play. They're not really a big fan of, like, five-man Dota. They just like to either outnumber their opponents or just force you out of position and then take fights. Yeah. It's why it seemed like in the past when they were known as, you know, Cloud9 minus MSS and plus Bone7, that their games usually devolved into stuff like this. It's because this is how they like to play. Yeah. All right. They got a Radiance, at least, on Ember. That's something. We're getting there. We are getting to that late game situation. Uh, but you're right, though. This is just their play style. And I will say, in the past couple of games they've played, and even in this game, it's worked out pretty well. A game that could have been a lot worse earlier on and probably they could have lost way earlier had they not really positioned themselves in such a way that they were able to take farm in different lanes they've done a good job however as triple c is coming in and envy might be the one to get caught lincoln you will come through the boulder smash will follow up as well the static storm to set it all up and envy is mega dead and he just fought that raise so no buyback for 95 seconds he is dead in the dirt how much time the newbie have to do something is the real question. I mean, they'll assuredly be able to push out one lane, but can they push out all of them, Mod? That is the question. Like, look at how N NP move, man. Like, as soon as Envy's dead, there's two heroes top, two Go heroes top. mid. Go They're mid. just like, yep, just freaking shove the creeps. And honestly, even with as mobile as newbie are, they're having a hard time keeping up. That is true. However, MSS is about to be caught. KP, Shadowbladed, Slytherin Crush, my god. Okay. He two shot him. He has buyback, so. Well, that's See good. Happens. He could get two shot again. He's gonna need it. And the uh, they're just chewing through backdoor protection, and you know what? He's strong enough to do so. 
MP have to fight. They've got to do something. They're going to lose two sets of racks unless they will find an engagement. The Orchid is done for S Triple C. Uh, it's not a full Bloodthorn yet, but guess what? They will get the full set of racks bottom. And now they're going to head right towards top with NV dead for another 33 seconds. It's kind of been a slow and painful death for NP, and they might finally be put out of their misery. KP will miss the Slytherin Crush. Hookshot on the back end of the fight. They're looking for Kaka. Static Storm to come through. It is going to miss along with the Kinetic Field. Now the Laguna Blade coming in. Kaka's going to yield himself up in the air. Oh, and I somehow still alive. MSS finds the Black Hole, but it's on to Moogie, and there is absolutely no follow-up damage, and MSS gets chewed down yet again. And that should be it, I would imagine, although NV is back up in six seconds. Still looking for more. They're going to try to find Pata this time around, but getting crushed by KP, both literally and figuratively. He will buy back into the game. And uh, we're getting to that point here, Draskal. It looks like this should be the end, but Envy does come back in. Moogie will get caught with a slide of his steering chains. LSA will come through as well, but the Yule Scepter is going to be up on Fata. Shiva's guard to come through. Magic Missile to head up as well. KP will find the Slurring Crush, and uh, can they bring him down the freezing field? Silence comes out immediately, and it's just going to be full Megas, and Envy trying to man fight. He will remnant himself back into the well. Fata and Envy doing all that they can, but again, Newbie will take the Megas. Slurring Crush to come through. They will Laguna down Faith, but already blown away is Fata for the second time, and Envy might be dead yet again. So GG is called. Newbie will take game number one of this best of five series. Outstanding performance from them, and NP, they did their damnedest to keep this game even, Draskal, but it just wasn't enough. Yeah, Newbie are just super, super good Dota players. Who would have thought? Right. But they're, 